West of the Rockies, below normal temperatures. East of the Rockies, above normal. And we've got a atmospheric river extending up from the Pacific into much of the southern U.S. and bringing with it tremendous amounts of moisture. Let's take a look at the world temperature extremes. Shark Bay in Western Australia reporting 113 degrees. They were 116 back on the 31st. And there you go, that's a look at that remote part of Australia. Again, 113 degrees. The world's cold spot, well, you go straight north into Siberia. That's going to be Yurti with minus 60. That's located on the Indigirka River in this low-lying valley. We don't have any photos of the terrain right there, but about 50 miles away, it looks kind of like this. In the U.S. this evening, there's the weather map. A push of cold air coming out of Canada, but rather mild. Temperatures are still above freezing from Minneapolis into South Dakota. The leading edge of that Canadian air mass extending from just west of Detroit to about St. Louis and into Wichita. And we've got a secondary boundary in Texas. This region, definitely bear a clinic. You can see numerous thickness lines from the Gulf all the way up towards Illinois. So that is a zone of temperature contrasts and that extends all the way into northern Mexico. The 500 millibar chart shows long wave troughing in the western and central U.S., ridging, building along the west coast, and a stormy weather pattern further out in the Pacific, and that's producing some inclement weather in southeastern Alaska, where we have winter storm warnings for today and tomorrow. Very strong west-southwesterly flow from the central to the eastern U.S. at 500 millibars, looking at about 70 knots. At 300 millibars, about 30,000 feet, that increases to about 130 knots. So flights going from Dallas to New York City, making some very good time. And it gets even stronger at 250 millibars, looking at up to 185 knots across Illinois and Missouri. And at 200 millibars, about 40,000 feet, it diminishes to about 160 knots as we approach the stratosphere. So that jet stream is supported by these thickness contrasts. That is a thermal boundary, and that extends up into the west coast area near the southern warm front, and that carves out this trough across the Rockies and northern U.S. And we might as well take a quick look out there in the Pacific, a much different pattern compared to a week ago when we had a west-east storm track into California. Well, the storm track today heading more for British Columbia. And they do have advisories from Stewart, British Columbia, over to the U.S. side where Juneau, Haines, and Skagway are under winter storm warnings. We are picking up enormous amounts of moisture out of the tropical eastern Pacific, flowing up over Mexico into the southern U.S., and as we go into the weekend, that moisture will be on the increase. By the way, this is the integrated vapor transport map. This basically combines the moisture with the magnitude of the wind flow, and that gives us an idea of where moisture is on the move. And as far as the absolute amount of water vapor in the atmosphere, this is precipitable water. This looks at a vertical column from the ground up into the stratosphere and gives us an idea how much rain we would get if we were able to squeeze all of it out. And we're seeing amounts up to one inch in the western Gulf and up into Alabama and Georgia. And take a look what happens when we go into tomorrow. It comes up to an inch and a half around Victoria, Houston, and over to Jackson, Mississippi. This is early Sunday. And with the next big wave lifting out of Mexico into the southeastern U.S. region, we will see an extensive band of precipitation from Texas all the way to the Atlantic seaboard. This will give you some idea of the moisture we're dealing with. The black lines, you've already seen that. That's the 
precipitable water. The shading is what's important. You can see the light green starting up. Those are 90th percentiles. So that's way above average for this time of year. And when we start going into tomorrow, higher amounts start to show up. 99th percentile in Southeast Texas. Lots of 97 to 99s over the weekend. And finally, as we go into Monday, we are pretty close to the maximum observed values. Not for this calendar date, but for a broad range of dates over a three-week period. So these are some very significant values popping up in the southeastern states. And the Weather Prediction Center, well, they've got the goods. This is the one through five day rainfall totals. So all this purple here, this is above one and a half inches. So that's a wide swath from Huntsville, Houston, all the way up through Shreveport, Jackson, Huntsville, Huntsville, Alabama, Atlanta, Chattanooga, and into the Carolinas. So definitely coming up on a very rainy pattern. Now the flip side of things is going to be snow in the Panhandles in western Oklahoma and out to the Sangre de Cristos. The water vapor imagery showing that large plume of high precipitable water from Texas to the Carolinas. Out to the west, this is in the base of that trough, some old occlusions, some upper disturbances, and a general showery pattern. Let's take a look at the visible imagery, and that's how it looks across the country. You can see in the southern U.S., dominated by cirrus, although close to the Gulf, where we have warm advection in place, we're getting some layers of stratus and stratocumulus, and a little bit of cumulus as well. And you can see that showery pattern in the western U.S., very unsettled, and we do have a few residual winter weather advisories in the Bitterroots and in northeastern Nevada. Checking in on the northeastern U.S., temperatures way above normal in the Midwest and the eastern Great Lakes region. Looking for highs around 65 at Indianapolis and Detroit and near 60 at Pittsburgh. And I went through the Air Force's forecast school in eastern Illinois during the wintertime. 60s, that was a pipe dream this time of year. This is where I was. And this is a very abnormal pattern. Overnight lows tonight will be near 60 degrees at Louisville and Nashville and 50s in Pennsylvania. However, winter weather advisories in northern Maine, way up there near the top, getting a little bit of residual mixed precip, up to one inch of snow, and that's going to extend through tomorrow morning. And some coastal flooding in parts of New Jersey, New York City, all the way down to Chesapeake Bay. In the southeastern U.S., fair in many of these areas, but with that very high precipitable water, we're going to have very good precip efficiencies, and we're looking for some heavy rain over the weekend, so if you need to prepare for that, now is the time. A similar situation for the southern plains, mostly under the influence of this atmospheric river, but up there in Kansas, weak little vort max at 850, 700 millibars, drifting to the southeast and producing a little bit of a cold core shower situation. This is the big winter storm watch for Saturday night into Sunday, extending from Wichita Falls, Lawton, Woodward, all the way back to the Sangre de Cristos, looking for 3 to 5 inches of snow, possibly 10 inches near the mountains. Most of this will be falling on Sunday. These are the projected totals from the National Digital Forecast Database. You can see that the measurable amounts start from just west of Oklahoma City to about Vernon, and then we start picking up 5 inches around Clinton, 5 inches at Amarillo, and 1 inch at Lubbock. Generally about 2 to 5 inches on the plains, and then heavier amounts in the Sangre de Cristos. During the day on Saturday, we're also looking for a snowfall event in the Denver Cheyenne area. Could see about 3 inches there, and maybe up to 5 inches in the Nebraska Panhandle. And for the southwestern U.S. region, definitely improved compared to several days ago, but cold air advection does continue. And you can see some of that open cell cumulus right there. 
That's a good indicator of a cold advection regime. As mentioned, winter weather advisory tonight in northeastern Nevada from Ely, Austin up to Elko, due to one to four inches of snow. We do have wind advisories in the mountains north of Los Angeles, along Interstate 5, through the passes, and also north of Santa Barbara. Those wind advisories will go through tomorrow night, and that's for north winds gusting to 50 miles an hour. And the beaches do remain hazardous due to rip currents and high surf. And not much going on for the northwestern U.S. There is a warm front off the coast of Washington, but it does not look like it's moving very much. Fair skies from Seattle into the interior. So let's go ahead and take a look at that forecast going into tonight and into tomorrow. You can see the rain starting up there in Texas. It will be quite warm across much of the eastern U.S. This is going to be the evening hours. Lots of rain from East Texas into Arkansas, Memphis, northern Mississippi. But out to the west, you can see that troughing in the thickness field. That's indicative of lots of cold air. You can see northerly winds throughout much of Arizona. Thermal troughing. In fact, those thickness values are below 540 across much of Arizona with the possibility of snow in the mountain regions. Temperatures will be only up to 45 degrees at Tucson and 55 at Phoenix. And we see that winter storm starting to develop in southern Colorado from Colorado Springs down to Trinidad, Clayton, and working down that front, which is kind of a hybrid occluded front. And as we go into the overnight hours early Sunday, you can see that snow picking up from Dalhart down to Amarillo transitioning over to snow and quite a bit of snow by midday on Sunday around Lubbock, Childress, Amarillo, and maybe all the way down to Hobbs. Meanwhile, our precipitation down along the Gulf Coast lifts out to the northeast and we get this dry slot working into the backside. Then continuing through the afternoon hours, we start to see this activity taper down, still some snow, towards evening, but gradually starting to diminish and maybe starting to transition over to rain during the overnight hours as we get that warm advection coming around the north side of that low. The precipitation works eastward along that front early on Monday and spreads into Atlanta, Birmingham, and the Carolinas. And then by Tuesday, we're looking at a coastal low, a little bit of a warm nor'easter, if you want to call it that, but there it goes, yeah, we do get the snow, some deepening of that low, so yeah, maybe just kind of a weak nor'easter working up the coast, and another outbreak of cold air coming in from the north. But that one is going to be a little bit mild. Then things get active once again in the Rockies for later in the week. Some strengthening of that frontal boundary towards next weekend. Looks like another rainy event along the Gulf Coast region. This is a classic... El Nino type pattern. Looks like the southern stream is quite active. Dry and cold air advection working into the eastern half of the country by the following week. And let's take a look at the Arctic air masses. So we take a look up there in Canada. I think it's time to start putting cold air on milk cartons because I'm wondering where it is. Temperatures are very mild here in Texas. It feels muggy, and I've heard people mowing their lawns, which is very unusual for this time of year. So let's take a look up there in Canada. Temperatures close to normal, but as we go into Monday and Tuesday, we see cold air flowing south across the Beaufort Sea region. The pressure's only about 1040 millibars. That's not terribly high, so just kind of a modest push of cold air southward. These are temperatures around minus 30 to minus 40, and some of it does make it into the northern plains, dropping temperatures in North Dakota down to about 0 to 10 above. And that's not really anything to write home about, but it will cool things down for parts of the central U.S. So how much will it cool things off? Let's just advance this up to next Thursday, because nothing really is going to happen until next Thursday. But we do see temperatures near zero up there in North Dakota 
and some of that cold air sinking into the northern plains. Looks very cold in Montana, down maybe just below zero, and a 1040 millibar high in place. And that will spread some cold air south, but you can see the freeze line still up there in Kansas and Missouri, so this is not terribly cold. And right around here we get some cyclogenesis in Kansas, which stalls things further. So I think we're going to have to wait until late in the month, if at all, to get a cool down in the southern U.S. That's all for this Friday edition of Forecast Lab. A very special thanks to our newest supporters, Chris and Jay and Kate. And I want to thank all of the people listed in our closing credits. Many have been financial supporters, but others have been important contributors in other ways or have helped get the word out. Either way, I appreciate you for being here and for helping to keep the program going. And for all of the other viewers, if you can support us with a cost of a cup of coffee, that will help us work toward the goal of making this more of a full-time project and maybe bringing us towards the goal of a five-day-a-week program. Just imagine if we could do that. Your help is what would make that possible. Anyway, we'll see you back here on Monday for the supporters and on Wednesday for everybody else. Hope you have a great weekend. Bye-bye.